They say you should dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That's why I've started showing up at the office looking like a 1980s Japanese gangster. Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming. Today I'm headbutting and karaokeing my way through the Yakuza series, a true smorgasbord of martial arts inspired street fighting and high culture. The first of these games was released in 2005, and since then there have been about 800 of them. Or a dozen, whatever. It feels like more though. These are pretty long games with convoluted melodramatic plots that manage to communicate constantly escalating twists by having muscular men in ridiculous suits grunt at each other. Are the stories and dialogue any good? To that, I can only say, I have a big tattoo. It symbolizes my violent lifestyle. But look, let's be honest here. Nobody cares if you make it to the end of one of these things, least of all the protagonists. Yes, in the cutscenes, they make it seem like they're concerned about stopping the villains or rescuing the people in danger, blah, blah, blah. But if that were the case, would they really be taking days off at a time to play Mahjong? Learn how to race drones? Or open up a cabaret club? If the princess is in another castle, that's her problem. The heroes of these games are dudes who roll around the seediest parts of Tokyo, getting jumped by rival gangs every two minutes, have hits put out on them by multiple mafia organizations and corrupt officials, and respond by saying, I think I'll go play 50 rounds of Virtua Fighter in a painstakingly recreated Sega arcade, then start managing a baseball team. But first, some whiskey and Korean barbecue. That's why and the other Yakuza pro tags should be seen as patron saints of today's quiet quitting trend. They're always out there doing the bare minimum not to get kicked out of their clans, but they're not about to let all that work get in the way of their infinite number of hobbies and fulfilling personal interests. The Yakuza series is not really about gangsters with hearts of gold foiling various crazy conspiracies. It's about people working for extremely demanding business organizations that heroically manage to carve out a decent work-life balance. Every time Kiryu chooses not to run to the abandoned building where the hostages are being kept, and instead races pocket cars all day, or decides to take in some uh, culture, he's striking a blow for the huge numbers of workers today who are also trying to create clear boundary lines with their employers. When you close your laptop at exactly 5 p.m., you are embodying the Yakuza spirit. When you politely say not this time to your boss's offer of an extra assignment that wasn't in your job description, you're standing up for yourself just like Kiryu. Plus, you don't even risk having him force you to chop off your pinky finger. But what's really at stake in both the quiet quitting trend and in the Yakuza games is something deeper than just defending your free time and pursuing hobbies. It represents what the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche called self-fashioning. Taking charge of one's own character and destiny and deciding how to develop them, where to focus one's energies and what kinds of talents to cultivate what sort of values to forge, and where to put the emphasis in one's own existence. Nietzsche recognized the workplace as one of the greatest threats to that power. He visited that theme multiple times, saying, in all those moments when we do our best, we do not work. Work is merely a means to these moments. Whoever has not two-thirds of his time to himself is a slave. There exists above the productive man a yet higher species. I tried that last line on a boss once when he asked me to come in on a Saturday. He loved it so much, he told me I didn't even have to worry about coming in on Monday. In any case, Nietzsche sometimes gets a bad rap for talking about the value of inequality, using easily misinterpreted words like ubermensch, overman. But in reality, He's talking about the different choices that can be made by the same person. 
Do you bow down to authority just to avoid friction? Or do you insist on being the one to define your own goals in life, even if they're to become the top aluminum can recycler in the Yokohama slums? Or a <clears throat> artistic photo album collector? The other way that Yakuza reinforces this message is by having all of the actually interesting stories happen only when you veer off the path. The main plot lines are cheesy and cliche ridden but the random pop-up side quests are often brilliant, fever-brained escapades. They cover everything from tracking down and confronting a fugitive public urinator, to battling anthropomorphic sheep to stay awake during a film screening. You wouldn't have that kind of fun if you were afraid to call in sick once in a while in order to hit the streets looking for trouble, whatever HR might say about it. Are Kiryu and Majima role models for living a life beyond good and evil? Establishing your own ethical value system and ways of imbuing life with meaning? Perhaps. In any case, their adventures do reflect old Friedrich's criticism that, in the glorification of work, in the unwearied talk of the blessing of work, I see the fear of everything individual, and that work is the best policeman, keeping everyone in bounds. All the more reason to wear a loud suit and do some competitive karaoke on your lunch break, instead of eating a pathetic desk salad. Keep watching Deep Thoughts while gaming. And remember, your boss doesn't need to know where you spend your free time.